know, reminds me of all the different places found on Earth and all the friends and family that I have all over the world. Thanks, and uh, it's been great working with you and all the other folks. Scott Carpenter, is there a, some sort of cockpit recording device like they have on jetliners in shuttles? No, Barry, don't have that. What was it like when you were re-entering and had that problem? It uh, is exciting. It goes... <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> Good word. The entry is part of a flight regime where the uh, status of the flight is rapidly changing and you have to be very careful that uh, and assure that everything goes right it's quite a fireworks display you've got a lot of important things to watch happen but it's something that training prepares you for and if everything goes right uh, you come back safely unfortunately today did not. that did not happen Jerry Leninger, do you think they had a warning? I know they had a little warning about tire pressure from what I've heard. Um, you know, all the little indicators. I think the people on Earth started seeing a few sensors go out, and I think they were starting to get worried. But I think the people on board, uh, I think it, it hit them very rapidly with very little to react to. And even if it had been um, a warning that something bad was happening, not a lot they can do when you're going 12,000 miles an hour at that critical part of flight. Alan Bean, one of our uh, people before who was viewing it from the ground and who is, uh, works at an airport as a veteran of these things, swore that that was lower than 200,000 feet. He thought it was a jetliner. Well, first of all, he thinks that's a contrail, which means condensation trail, which means the fuel from your jet engine, free, you know, the left but unburned fuel freezes, and that makes the white trails behind airplanes. Well, that isn't what was going on with the shuttle at 200,000 feet. There's no water behind it. What you're fe seeing is uh, heat from the heat shield, and it's making sort of a smoke, uh, um, smoky residue. So it's a completely different thing. And if you think it's contrails, they only work up to about 45,000, 50,000 feet. So, you know, oh. that's what confused him. Senator Nelson and uh, you and Walter Cronkite are two uh, civilians, in a sense, who went up. Would you go again? I would, Larry. Uh, and I said that uh, 17 years ago, almost at this exact time, having uh, our crew just returned to Earth, 10 days later, Challenger launched and blew up. I was asked that question then, and uh, I think most anyone on a crew would go again. It's Walter, important do you regret... I'm sorry. It's sorry, important, uh, uh, Larry, it's important to the future of this country. Uh, we are, as a character of American people, by nature, explorers and adventurers. And we never want to give that up. If we do, we're a second-rate nation. And that's why we have to overcome this problem and get back into the flight. Walter, do you regret that you never went? Oh, very much so, Larry, very much so. I think it's one of the great disappointments in my life that I uh, never got up there. I followed the space program from the very beginning and uh, and wanted to get aboard. Uh, I thought I was on the short list to make the trip that uh, eventually went to a school teacher and we lost McAuliffe, of course, on that Challenger trip. But uh, uh, the adventure of it, the, the uh, experience would be in inevitable. Really great. Do you know, the, I, I was impressed today. I wonder if others were with the fact that we had that, in those incredible amateur pictures of the uh, approach of the uh, of the Columbia, uh, and whether it was uh, uh, whatever the whether it was smoke or contrail or whatever, uh, it seems to me that uh, NASA's got some incredible pictures of uh, the Columbia really almost peeling apart. You could see the parts coming off of it. And I would think that as they carefully examine those pictures, they're going to be able to determine what parts those were even. And it uh, yeah. might, might simplify the uh, search for what happened and why. Isn't that a good point, Alan Bean? I think it is a really good point. Uh, they're going to study those. And they have c other cameras that no one has probably taken a look at yet, uh, the film, because they don't want to take a chance of losing it. And they're going to spend a lot of time studying this. And I think they're going to be able to 
you know, pinpoint exactly when something gave way and sort of what maybe it was and put that together with the telemetry. And, and they'll have a step-by-step -step or in tenth of a second by tenth of a second uh, timeline before too long talking about what happened where. And then they'll back up with that and say, what could have caused this? And, and then they'll probably go from there. So they're wor I'm sure they're working on that now, collecting this other film. Senator Nelson, uh, Scott Carpenter was very confident they will find the answer to what went wrong. Are you? Uh, I am, Larry. Uh, when you add everything that everyone has said uh, with the fact that there are pieces of the wreckage on the ground in a pattern that went uh, in a southeasterly direction across Texas, and if the public is responding as uh, responsibly as it apparently is, leaving those uh, pieces of wreckage alone and notifying the authorities, they're going to get a lot of evidence from that. Scott, everybody is gathering in use in the families and the like. Uh, uh, do former astronauts go to those things? Do you, are you going to go? Uh, time will tell. I'm not sure yet, Larry. Do you keep involved in the space program, Scott? Of course. We go, all go back to Houston for our annual physicals with a newly installed medical corps, which includes uh, geriatric surgeons. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, do you think this will diminish the program at all, that um, people are going to sour on it? I don't think so. You know, those astronauts are brave souls, and uh, I think we need to carry on. I, I have to say something, Larry, to Walter Cronkite. Uh, he lived vicariously through me because when I was 14 years old and the people I'm on this show with were up there on the moon, uh, he <laughs> once was doing a broadcast and got a tear in his eye and he was so choked up he couldn't talk. We were on the moon, and I said, I want to do that someday. And so Walter Cronkite helped inspire me to become an astronaut. So. Uh, he lived through us, and I think uh, all of us astronauts lived through each other, and that was one fine crew up there today, and the future astronauts will be on their shoulders. Walter, how does that make you feel? Well, that makes me pretty proud to know that I contributed that great man to the space program, <laughs> and I, I appreciate the kind words. Alan Bean, do you miss it? I miss it a lot. Uh, I left there some 22 years ago, and... Uh, I think about particularly when they're doing something exciting like EVA or repairing the Hubble Space Telescope or assembling the space station. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, today I, one of the things that's happened in the space program is the, the person that, the astronaut, whether it's male or female, they get the excitement and uh, honors and everything else of going into space, but their mates that are home, male or female depending, uh, they they just get a lot of the worry, and uh, yeah. when I... Uh, we're, we're out of time, Alan, but I'll tell you what, we're going to have you back, okay? Sure, fine. No, Alan. We're going to have you, you all know, back. Alan, uh, th we think of the... Uh, of the we're out of time, Walter. We also we're out of time, but you can talk to them off the air. Walter Cronkite, Scott Carpenter, Jerry Lininger, Alan Bean, and Senator Bill Nelson. We're going to have them all back. There'll be another special edition of Larry King Weekend tomorrow night at our regular time. Anderson Cooper will follow us with more live coverage throughout the night. Thanks for joining us, and sad good night.